All right. So you see the slide. What do you think about it? This is something which is a routine. Something that we read every day in the newspapers. And what comes to our mind? We think, all right, the figure changes. It's six today. Probably it would be eight tomorrow. And at the max, what we do? We read the location. That, OK, if I'm from Chandigarh, has this happened in Chandigarh? And if it is Chandigarh, I just go through the names of the victims. If I know them, I would be affected. If I don't know them, I would say, all right, just another accident. So accident per se is the wrong word. It's a crash. The difference in word, because accident is something which happens by chance. And crash, as we use for the planes, if there is an unfortunate crash, we look for the scientific reasons. Just giving you an example, if I start moving forward, we all know what would happen. I would fall down and I would get injured. So would we call it an accident? No, because there's a reason behind it and we all know what, is the, what that reason is. And the next thing is, what can we do about it? Yes, that's a problem. What can I do about it? It's morning and we have our own uh, daily schedule lined up. So all we say is I can do nothing about it. And I'll probably forget this within seconds after going to the sports page. So how are these news items piling up? If we talk about India, just one country, you see this graphic of a Boeing plane. Imagine a Boeing plane full of 400 passengers and a full plane crashing every day in our country. What would happen? This would become a headline of every newspaper and it would be covered in nearly every TV show or news all across the world. Am I right? And it would be nearly just in India, 1,50,000 dead in one year. And if you break it down, that comes to that figure of 400 per day. So if I take complete 18 minutes, in 18 minutes, there would be nearly six people who would be dead somewhere in our country on our roads, and which is something which is really avoidable. Now, you see on the screen, you see 10 planes. So multiply this figure all over the world, 10 planes crashing. So th th that's the impact. If that, that's the astonishing figure, just because of these avoidable road crashes. So these many lives are being lost. And at least you multiply this by 10. There are serious consequences. For example, people with life-altering injuries. Injuries that cannot be probably cured. Now, we were talking about figures, and we were talking what can we do about it. So this is just one of those figures. Behind every figure that I'm talking about, let's say 400 people a day, behind every figure there is a face. There is a family which is getting affected. There's a mother who's upset. There's probably a father, a child, a brother, a sister, a friend. So that's the magnitude of this problem. So imagine all this happening every day, every minute, and all the hospitals are nearly full with 50% of their capacity 
being used by people with injuries coming out of road crashes. So that economically, it comes to approximately 3% of our GDP, the gross domestic product. Our defense budget, our health budget, the national defense or the health budget is lesser than that. So we are wasting more money into this avoidable thing. And unfortunately, further unfortunately, most of those people who are dying, they are young. Then the most productive age group of 15 to 40. And this is my picture. I was 26 when this happened. And now this 24th October, I'll be 21 years old again. So that's how things change. Now, just giving you an example, you can see on one side there are pebbles and then there's a big rock on the road. So when we are faced by challenges, a small pebble in the front wheel of my wheelchair would look to me like this rock because I would not be able to move it myself. I'll be stuck. So, should we stop there? Because if any of us is going on a road and this kind of a boulder falls on the road, what are we supposed to do? Are we supposed to stop there forever and not try and do something? No, that, that's it's never the end of it. So that emptiness that uh, my friend was just talking about the psychological health and uh, the psychiatric issues. I was in a plaster jacket from head till my chest for more than four months. Lying in the bed, just the only thing I could see was the roof. And subsequently, nearly two years up in the hospital up and down. And that was my only outing. Earlier I used to go uphill and now I was tied to the bed. So that was the difference and this rock explains it all. So this issue took me, as I was telling, took me to the hospital and when I used to go to the emergency, incidentally it became my habit that I used to look at the board. There's a board written like uh, how many new patients have come in their uh, age and the reason. So RTI is road traffic injury. And that was the first time that I realized that the magnitude of the problem, half of that was filled up with RTIs. And it normally doesn't bother us because probably the person inside is not known to us. But if you think you won't take more than 30 seconds, you would come to know that some relative, somebody from your family, a close friend, must have definitely got affected by a road crash. And like, we are all affected by this problem, which is totally avoidable. And as per the uh, international studies, and uh, there are, it is scientifically proven as how we can deal with this problem. There are five things. One is having a policy on road safety. Second, having safe roads. Third, having safer vehicles. Fourth is safe road user behavior. And fifth is post-crash trauma, which is if all the first four fail, then the ambulance and the hospital. But to avoid this, if we come and talk about the fourth part, which is road user behavior, out of these, if you just take care of five basic things, one, the speed at which you drive, second is driving under the influence of any alcohol or drug, third, not wearing helmet or a seat belt, and fourth, using mobile while driving, and fifth, visibility. So just five things, you would be quite safe. And out of these, 
just one small thing. You can see these pictures and you can relate to it. These are roadside liquor shops. Probably uh, you might not think the kind of impact they have. Again, giving you a piece of data which comes from the government of India. Uh, if you are traveling on National Highway 1 from Panipat in Haryana to Jalandhar in Punjab, it's 291 kilometers, which has 185 liquor shops. It had these many liquor shops. So if you divide it, it becomes nearly one and a half kilometer, one liquor shop. If you're driving at the Indian national speed limit of 90 kilometers an hour, every one minute you come across a liquor shop. So that means if you're driving down, this is just one stretch of the road. Every one minute you'll come across a liquor shop. So any kind of enforcement or awareness would fail with this kind of availability. And why are these people on the road? because that's where the sale is the maximum. And these businesses are owned by very powerful people who have all kinds of contacts, controls, what and what not. So in spite of knowing this problem, this issue was not being addressed. So it's been more than six years now that I've been working on this issue of getting these liquor shops removed from the highways. So I had uh, not known the legal procedures as how these things go. So it started by approaching the Honorable High Court. The High Court ordered that liquor shops should not be accessible or visible from the highways. And within just five days, the state governments, they moved the Supreme Court and then the Honorable Supreme Court ordered that liquor shops should be removed from the highways. But there is now an amendment and probably very soon you would be finding them again back onto the road. But that's not going to be the end of it. We'll continue with this fight and probably would come up with a revised order. So why I'm saying this is that time and again I'm saying what can I do about it. We can all do something about something. Just look at this picture, you would see two things. One, we the humans, that's how we behave on the road. And second, it's the ants. Just see the difference. They are not humans, they are not being guided by any uh, third party or police. They are all following the rules. Whenever you are out of here, just notice them for a minute. They never have a traffic jam. They never have a road crash. The reason, they coordinate properly with each other. They follow a discipline. And that is where we are lacking. We as humans, we lack here. We want our country to be amongst the most developed countries. If you see, you land from the plane, you travel to any other country, the first thing you see is the road and the way the vehicles are moving. So that shows our character. So your character on the road is a, your behavior on the road is a reflection of your character. So if we are properly moving on the road, we won't be pushing each other at the door and we'll be working properly. So that's the only difference between our country and countries like Japan and other countries which are far ahead. So just one little request. Please try to follow these ants. We'll all be better human beings and better countrymen and it'll be good for all of us. Thanks a lot. Thank you.